Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Prime Time Local News. Jasmine King joined here with Abby St. John today, where we're going to be giving you your updates on all your local news, weather and sports, such as the Holy Rosary, Holy Rosary sorry, football game tonight. But our question of the day today has to do with World Mental Health Day. Now, because of more recent years, I think the stigma is really ending for mm -hmm. talking about your mental health. I definitely will have to agree. You know, people are more open to be talking about it, which is great. We're not totally there, but we're definitely on the right track to yeah, getting there. Yeah, I, I agree like, yeah. with you. But now we're going to go to Josh Ryan, who is on location. Thanks very much, Jasmine and Abby. We are at fire station number two uh, over on College Drive by Lakeland College uh, for the uh, fire department's annual open house to the community, uh, as well as a very educational opportunity for people to learn about what they do here at the fire station and also some safety tips, certainly. It is fire prevention week, and with many modern homes, uh, the risk of a fire spreading quickly in your house has gotten even worse. So plenty to be learned uh, moving forward over the next couple of hours, uh, things you can take home with you to your home and other aspects uh, for safety in your life as well. So much coming up over the next two hours, specifically with Fire Chief Jordan Newton. But first, let's head back to you guys in studio and take a look at what's going on with our local news. One local woman has been making a difference in Uganda for the past 13 years, which started off as a one-time trip to Uganda has transformed into creating a community and a partnership. We have more on the fundraiser held last night for the partnership. <laughs> The fundraiser was held at the Living Faith Church. The night featured many different things to help raise money. A group went to Uganda last January with me, and when they came back, they just wanted to do more, and so they've organized an event. We've got live music, some Ugandan treats, and a silent auction, and our craft market from the um, goodies that we brought back from Uganda that the ladies we work with make. Tara Lorenz first went to Uganda 13 years ago. After learning more about the culture and what goes on there, she wanted to help the people who live there, but in a more meaningful way by empowering the communities to be self-sufficient. In Uganda, basically what we do is we partner with communities. And so um, originally back in 2006, we took over a corrupt orphanage. And what we found is that we wanted to reconnect children with their families and then partner with those families through bringing education to the child and to the family, doing trainings and helping them get to a level where um, they're self-sustaining and they can support themselves. The money they raise will be going back into a few various areas across the organization. We're operating on a regular basis and so we have different areas. We have areas where it just goes into the continual upkeep of our organization but overall our goal is to use these funds and to put that capital into projects that are the locals in Uganda are going to be able to maintain. As Lorenz has been going back to Uganda for over a decade, she said she didn't really realize how much a few dollars can really do until she actually went and connected with the Ugandan people. When you connect with the humanity of another person, you're not just sending money over there. You're getting to know someone in their situation that is so different than your own. And so many of the situations they saw were so hard. And what many people saw was it was hard, but these were incredible people that when given a chance, they want to change their circumstances. And so I just think whether it's in Canada or anywhere in the world, I think that's important to keep that, that spirit and not to close yourself off to being able to be a, a lifeline to somebody or to just get to know them in a different way. Loren says the support from the people in Lloyd has been great, and if you still want to donate, visit ourvillageuganda.org and click on the Donate tab. George, the therapy dog of the Lloydminster Rescue Squad and Sexual Assault Center, is making progress in gaining popularity, especially after this weekend's gala. However, he isn't quite ready for full-time duty just yet. Chief Norn Namier says there's still a lot of work to make sure he remains calm while on the job. He's only 12 weeks, so we need to get another, um, you know, another eight, ten months under his, uh, under him, and then uh, we'll be able to start uh, tackling the community. As his training nears completion, George will be available more frequently for other organizations in the area. So we're, we're definitely open to anyone who can use him. Uh, we're, we're glad to share him with other groups, um, so we're excited for that. The Rescue Squad welcomed George to the team last month. Country Quilts and Stitches provides people who enjoy sewing with the tools they need to create while also encouraging the next generation to pick up the craft. Eric Bay has more on this week's BioClean Business Bio. 
Owner Jody Davidson has enjoyed sewing since her youth and, seeing a need in Lloyd Minster, decided to open Country Quilts and Stitches, providing supplies and classes for those wanting to sew. I had been a crafter sewer since I was very young and we didn't have a, a quilting store in town anymore. It had closed down a couple years prior to that so I thought well I think we need it. There's still lots of quilters um, and crafters in town. Among those classes, Country Quilts and Stitches holds a kids camp teaching children to sew and giving them the chance to create a variety of projects. They made a ton of projects. Um, they made aprons, they made a couple different kinds of bags, pencil cases, pillows, uh, pajama pants. It was really good. The kids had a really good week. They made, uh, on average, about two projects a day. And uh, then they all took home at the end of the week their sewing machine and sewing notions and, of course, all their projects. Davidson says continuing to pass on these skills through kids camps is important to keep sewing alive. We, we need to get the younger generation um, um, crafting and sewing and uh, learning those skills because it, it seems to me like it's kind of a dying art and we're kind of missing a generation there. So um, we did actually have the kids camp this summer which uh, went over really well and it was really well received. So we have 10 new sewers. <laughs> Country Quilts and Stitches provide sewing machines, quilting cotton, and supplies. And that's this week's BioClean Business Bio. Business Bio, brought to you by BioClean. Call the Bio Team, 1-833-246-8326. The Disaster Specialists. Now we go to our Josh Ryan, who is on location. Joined now by Fire Chief Jordan Newton at station number two, getting ready for this big open house, one of your biggest uh, annual events, certainly, for the fire department. And it's a big week being Fire Prevention Month. What are some of the things that people coming out for this open house can uh, look forward to over the next two hours? Yeah, so tonight uh, marks our annual open house, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at Fire Station 2. That's the one by the college. Uh, tonight we'd like to invite all the residents to come tour their fire department. It's uh, the community's fire department. Come look at uh, the fire trucks. There'll be some displays of uh, some of the firefighter skills and meet your local firefighters. It's a great time to bring the kids and play in all the fire trucks and ask uh, the fire department any questions you may have. What are some of the most uh, frequently asked questions you get or uh, questions that you hope people will ask? Well, uh, our most frequent question we get is, do we have a pole in the fire station, which uh, we do not. We are a single floor fire station. Um, but the question that I do want a lot of people to ask is, what can we do to prepare and to be safe at home? And that's the theme of this week's Fire Prevention Week, is home fire safety and home escape plans. So we'd like to uh, just remind families to talk about home escape plans if there ever is an emergency in their home. And uh, before we get into over the next couple of hours here about some of those uh, tips you can give, what's the first most primary thing you would tell people in dealing with a house fire? Yeah, it's, it's all about preparation. Um, talking with, uh, especially if you have family, talking with your kids or anyone that lives in the home, uh, what to do if there is a fire, if the smoke alarm does sound, uh, and if you can't get out, what are you supposed to do? We always tell kids not to hide uh, under beds and closets, anything like that. And then most importantly is also where to find uh, each other outside. We like to try and find that muster point outside so the whole family can uh, be rejoined and nobody's running back inside the house uh, to look for any lost kids. And I suppose you're going to have to wear warmer clothes when they get to the muster point outside knowing the weather's going to change soon. Uh, yes, I think we do know the weather is going to be changing quite soon, but uh, tonight should be a warm night and uh, come on down and tour the fire station. And we're looking forward to it as well. Tune in over the next two hours again. But first, back into the studio for a look at your local weather. Thanks, Josh. Well, today, looking at our current temperatures, we're sitting at 3 degrees here in Lloyd Minster. The mix of sun and cloud, which we've seen throughout the day. Luckily, that it was mostly sunny skies today, but there has been a little bit more cloud coverage over the past couple of hours. Winds coming in the West at 16 kilometers per hour. Our records for today back in 1984, the record high was 25 degrees and the record low back in 2009 was minus 10. Now taking a look at 
Temperatures across the region, 3 in North Battleford, Saskatoon and Melfort, 4 in Prince Albert, 5 in Meadow Lake, 5 in Cold Lake as well, 4 in Red Deer, Rocky Mountain House, 7 in Edmonton, White Court, Edson and in Jasper, and 8 out in Athabasca. Now taking a look at Cold Lake overnight, they'll be dropping below 0 with minus 7 with a mix of clear and cloudy skies and that wind will drop down to 7 kilometers per hour and then tomorrow they should be getting a nice beautiful sunny day with plus 8 as the high. Now in North Battleford, a minus 8 is the projected temperature for overnight but with clear skies and tomorrow also a nice sunny day with a high of 8. Here in Lloyd Minster, same as Cold Lake, will be sitting at minus 7 overnight with clear skies and that wind will drop down to 9 kilometers per hour coming in from the southwest and then tomorrow sunny skies with a high of 7. Now looking over the weekend, Saturday will have a mostly sunny skies with a mix of clouds coverage throughout the day and the wind will pick up just a little bit to 11 kilometers coming in from the south southeast with a high of 8 and a low of minus 7 and then on Sunday we should have some cloudy skies with a high of 7 and a low of minus 5 and we're nowhere near our averages for this time of year with our we're below our average high at 12 and then we are, are definitely below zero where which is our average low that's a look at your three-day forecast we'll have your 70 forecast later on in the cast. Welcome back. As the temperatures begin to drop, farmers are being forced to look at their feed stores and determine how much will be needed to keep their animals fed through the winter. Eric Bay has more in this week's Ag Report. A hard growing season across the prairies has raised concerns about farmers' abilities to feed their herds once snow covers the ground. Alberta Farm Animal Care is encouraging farmers to take steps to ensure they have quality feed for their animals. It's been um, a rough growing period and that can impact the quality of the feed you may have stored ahead for the winter. Um, and so one, one of the things that you can do is you can test your feed just so that you can formulate a ration going into winter and have a plan ahead of time. And the other thing that we need to concentrate on is the condition of our livestock going into the winter. Testing feed before winter hits is an important step in creating a ration plan for feed so that animals are getting the quality nutrients they need. You will um, take a portion of that feed and submit it to a lab. So usually in the case of bales, it's good to get a core sample so that we have a good size sample to test rather than grabbing it with your hand because particles will fall out. With varying temperature swings throughout winter, keeping a good body temperature is crucial, which makes winter feeding even more important. If they have a low body condition score right now, you're going to want to feed them more so that they are producing more heat and so that they can maintain that good body condition score throughout the winter. And if we have a really cold winter, they're going to need more energy so that they can keep their temperature, internal temperature normal. So you might have to feed additionally. Colder conditions means more energy used and more food consumed, which could test farmers' reserves over the next six months. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. This ag report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Center. Depend on them for product, tools, and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Center with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. Now let's take a look at your ag prices. Less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops at Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Center Auto Body. It's Thursday night football in the Border City. Tonight, the high school teams will duke it out to secure playoff positions. Our Evan Kenny has the details. Week 8 of the Wheatland Football League kicks off tonight. What was supposed to be on the agenda has now changed. The Holy Rosary Raiders were scheduled to take on the Bonneville Voyagers but the Voyagers had to forfeit due to injuries. 
This is the second forfeit of the season, with the first coming back in week six between Westlock and Cold Lake. We really didn't want a week off. We, you know, we feel like the kids are really starting to roll and timing's getting where it needs to be. Uh, we tried to find a game and, and didn't have any luck, but, um, you know, so we're practicing hard. The game could have caused playoff implications for three teams. If the Voyagers won, them, along with both Lloyd teams, could have been tied for first place in the Wheatland. Um, but we were looking forward to the game today against, uh, you know, a team that potentially beat us, finish first place. You know, that was going to be a good comp good competitive football game and and uh, so missing that opportunity is not not the best yeah so I think there's a number of teams in the league that all have a chance to win any given week so ourselves Holy Rosary St. Paul Bonneville all really close games last week Bonneville took on Lloyd Comp where Lloyd Comp walked away winning by one point we didn't capitalize on a couple so uh, I think if we play really really well we're going to be tough to beat but if we make big mistakes like that then uh, yeah, we'll be in some close games, and uh, we're definitely beatable, too. The Bears will be taking on the current fourth-place seed, the St. Paul Lions. The Lions currently sit second in points against, only allowing 12.6 per game. They also sit third in points scored, averaging 34.2 points per game. Yeah, I mean, you watch film and you prepare the best you can. You try to take away their best plays and take away their best players and uh, focus on those guys. The Barons will have to make sure they bring their A game offense tonight. The Barons average almost 40 points per game this season and have won three games by 40 or more. Yeah, I think we're just going to let our athletes be athletes. We'll let uh, our quarterback throw the ball and we'll give the ball to our playmakers in space. And uh, uh, we're going to try and get the ball outside against some of their smaller guys and hope that our guys can make some plays. The game is currently in action at Armstrong Field. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Now we go to our Josh Ryan who is on location. Oh, let's... We're back at fire station number two. It's a big day for me because I have become a junior firefighter and I'm hoping to graduate through as much of the firefighting program as I can over the course of this evening. Um, now, Fire Chief Jordan Newton with me again. Tell us a little bit about this display. These are all, all things the public can pick out and take a look at for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So we brought a lot of our fire prevention material down to the fire station to give out tonight. Um, and inside of a lot of these things is uh, puzzles and things for kids and really start to uh, start the discussion at home about fire prevention and fire prevention week. And uh, if you take a look inside these uh, books, they are definitely very colorful. Obviously, these hats should be, these hats, I should say helmets, helmets are going to be a lot of fun. There's also, of course, uh, some booklets for the adults as well. So fire and safety, uh, 30 years worth of information here. Um, and what are some of the things that people can find in these? Yeah, so within these books, it'll be talking about um, home fire escape plans. You'll be able to draw your own home uh, and talk with your family and with your kids on what to do and escape plans and uh, things like that. Um, there's a lot of safety tips in there as well as home fire safety and um, common fire uh, causes and uh, how to uh, mitigate those. What are some of the most common fire causes? Uh, you know, we see everything, um, right from equipment malfunctions in the home, so things like electrical, mechanical, and um, just uh, human-caused uh, errors. And it doesn't take long for fire to spread. Uh, in our traditional homes, uh, it took a long time for fire to spread. In new age construction and with modern furnishings, um, it could take as little as two minutes. So it's important to uh, start these discussions early and start them now. And of course, you'll have a chance to have these discussions over the course of the next uh, two and a bit hours here at station number two. Uh, things open up at six o'clock. We'll see you guys here. And for now, let's head back into the studio. Another look at your weather. Thanks, Josh. We're taking a look at current temperatures. It's still three here in Lloydminster, as well as out in Marwayne. Five in Cold Lake, Bonneville, Lac La Biche. Six in Vermilion and Vegreville. Seven out in Edmonton. Four in St. Paul. Five in Wainwright and four in Provost. On the Saskatchewan side, three in Macklin, North Battleford and St. Walberg. Four in Green Lake, Meadow Lake, Pearson. Five in Isla Cross and two in Maidstone. Now tomorrow, seven here in Lloydminster, as well as across Saskatchewan. 
Baldwin, Nyla Cross, Green Lake, Meadow Lake, and St. Walberg, 8 in Pearson, North Battleford, and in Macklin. And on the Alberta side, 8 in Cold Lake, Lac La Biche, Bonneville, Vegarville, Wainwright, and Provost, 7 in St. Paul, and in Vermilion, and 9 out in Edmonton. Now across the country, Vancouver sitting at 10 degrees, uh, 7 out in Edmonton, 3 in Regina, 6 in Whitehorse, 4 in Yellowknife, 0 in Winnipeg, where they could see some flurries tonight. Toronto sitting at 13, 10 in Quebec City, 6 in St. John's, and 9 out in Halifax. Now your school day forecast for tomorrow, looking a little bit cold when you start the day at 8 a.m. at minus 6, but it should be sunny throughout the entire day, and then a warm up by recess at minus 3, and then lunchtime it will be above zero at two and then schools out. It will be a nice seven degrees. Now for the next seven days over the Thanksgiving weekend, mix of sun and cloud on Saturday with a high of eight and low of minus seven. Sunday, mostly cloudy skies with a high of seven and a low of minus five. Then on Monday, could see some possibilities of a mix of uh, snow and rain with a high of five and a low of minus one. And then on Tuesday will be a high of five and a low of minus six with a mix of sun and cloud throughout the day. And then it should be a nice sunny day on Wednesday with a high of nine and a low of minus one. And then Thursday, a high of nine and a low of zero. That is your seven day forecast. We'll have more news after the break. Back at fire station number two one more time. We're nearing the start of the annual open house and I'm joined again by Fire Chief Jordan Newton and we're going to take a look at some of the displays uh, starting with one that the kids should enjoy. So kind of tell the folks what uh, we're about to see on screen here. Yeah, so uh, one of the best things about our annual open house is all the great firefighting equipment and skills that we get to show off. So beside me I actually have one of our doll houses that we're going to use and we're going to let uh, children and a few adults spray some fire hoses and try and put the fire out in the house. Uh, it's a great way to uh, show the kids what firefighting is all about and it's a great story for the year. Um, in addition, what else we're going to have tonight? We're going to have our aerial ladder, the 115 foot ladder up and we'll be flying that all night long and it's a, it's a sight to behold, believe me. Uh, we'll have all of our trucks open so parents and kids get to climb through the trucks and see what, uh, what all the firefighting equipment that we have in the community. How much of your equipment that uh, you'll be displaying tonight, how much of it uh, gets used regularly and how much or what kind of items are only used in really extreme situations that uh, you obviously don't have to deal with, you know, every week necessarily? Yeah, so all of our equipment is used quite regularly. We do have um, certain trucks that run more than others and we do have some specialized equipment for those very rare circumstances when people's lives are in jeopardy. So we'll be uh, excited to share them all tonight and show them and uh, you'll, be able to be, you'll be able to get your hands on them. And uh, also the gear too, I'm looking forward to uh, potentially trying on some of this. Um, how, much, how, how much of these uh, suits are oft always used? So I guess every uh, member of the team has to have one, or do you have some folks who won't be in full sort of tactical gear, so to speak? Yeah, so every firefighter does have their own set of gear, and uh, I'm excited to get you in there, and uh, we'll see if we can sign you up to be a firefighter, and if you can put this house fire out beside me. I don't have high hopes, but uh, you should think glass half full rather than glass half empty. So we'll see how that goes uh, in the coming hour. But first, we have one more uh, trip back to the studio. Question of the day coming up amongst other things in studio. Thanks, Josh. Now our question of the day today, like we said, has to do with World Mental Health Day. And our question was, what strategies do you use to maintain a healthy mindset? And when I was talking to some people around the office today, a lot of them was just making sure that you are talking to somebody and you are making sure and checking up on those around you. Yeah, I think that's a the biggest thing is once you start communicating with others about how you're feeling or even just simply asking how are you doing today, that could it could mean the world to somebody and it could actually change you know how they're feeling that day into something positive which is probably the most important part. And one thing that we always hear is you never know what someone is going through mm -hmm. and that's true for this day so that's why always making that strategy to go out and yeah. say something is really important. Especially if someone around you is you know acting a little bit off 
uh, uh, you know, not their normal personality, definitely go up and say, hey, are you doing anything or can I grab you anything or do you need help with anything? It makes a world of difference. And just having a day like this does really also help with ending the stigma around mm -hmm. mental health. Oh, exactly. It definitely gives that um, just that next step opportunity to definitely talk about it because someone is going through something. Everyone goes through something in their life. So it's always important to have, especially a day uh, just wrapped around that kind of stuff. Exactly. Now, one thing we do like to talk about is your pets. So we're going to take a look at your pet pictures. This is Shamu. Just gorgeous. I love how the eyes look a little bit crossed, but just beautiful. Awesome picture. This is Maya with an adorable little bow in her fur, just so cute. <laughs> just staring right at that camera, so cute. And then this is Stella. I love Stella, just an adorable looking dog, just super cute. <laughs> just staring right at the camera. And then this is Spencer. Fluffy and super adorable, obviously loves the outdoors, just so cute. He looks very fluffy. Yep. And then finally, this is Tina and Pumpkin Spice. Love the names and the big green eyes on Pumpkin Spice, just super cute. <laughs> Definitely a fall festive name. Well, thank you to everyone who submitted your pictures. We'll be giving away a pet pad gift card tomorrow. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. I'm joined now by Canada's number one fundraising auctioneer, Danny Hooper. Danny, thank you so much for joining the program. We're here uh, earlier this weekend at the Sa Sirens and Sapphires Gala, uh, an event you've uh, obviously embraced quite a bit. Well, I certainly have. Uh, I love this event. This is the fifth annual and an exceptionally big night here tonight, an important night. We're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the Lloydminster Rescue Squad, uh, which is a real unique organization. I do fundraising auctioneers every year all across North America, and I've worked for every kind of organization. I've been doing this since 1987. Uh, strictly fundraising auctions. Josh, I've never sold a cow. I've never sold a car or a farm sale or an antique sale. Strictly fundraising auctions. So I think after this many years, I've pretty much seen it all from the smallest little church groups and school groups and sport teams on up to National Football League as a client and and David Foster Foundation and, and so I really recognize a good event when I see one this is great they've been sold out already they have a capacity crowd tonight they sold out a couple of weeks ago sponsorship is up this year and that's always indicative that you've got a good solid committee organizing your event not afraid to get out there and develop relationships in the community which these people have done an excellent job of. Well, many people who are from this area have seen you before, seen your work, and may know some of your history. For those who don't know, kind of how did you get into the uh, auctioneering gig and the public speaking gig, per se? Well, it's a good question, uh, kind of a roundabout way. You know, I think the good Lord gives everybody uh, some kind of unique gift or talent. And I think in my case, I, I was blessed with a, um, a sense of humor. You know, I grew up in a very, very funny home. Uh, I was born in Edmonton, raised on a cattle ranch in Tomahawk, and started my entertaining career as a country music singer uh, back in 1975. And, and so I spent a lot of nights back when you could entertain six nights a week, and every little town had a bar with a band. And I was on the road 48, 49 weeks a year, just learning to be an entertainer. And because a lot of those towns are pretty rough and tumble back, Back in that time, you had to lean on that sense of humor to learn how to navigate your way through just about any kind of an audience. And uh, in 1987, I, ha I, have, I have an uncle that is an auctioneer. In 1987, he was going to do a Ducks Unlimited auction, brought me along to tell some jokes and kind of entertain everybody. And halfway through the auction, he said, why don't you try selling this print? And I didn't know how to auction, but I got up and bumbled my way through it, had people laughing and got a lot of money for the print. And he said, you know, you should think of uh, developing this up as a career, as a fundraising auctioneer. So it's been, uh, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun. It's, it's just the coolest job in the world. And I asked you off camera here, what was your kind of favorite sort of gig to do or favorite vibe you get from an audience? But as you said, you've done so many different groups that it's hard to pick one, I guess. It is hard to pick one. You know, as I say, I've worked with the smallest little church groups, uh, school groups, sport teams, uh, on up to the huge, huge, the massive galas. And uh, they all have something unique to offer. You need to be very adaptive in, in your style, working with different crowds, and you have to watch the humor. You know, what's going to work at a guy's stag golf tournament is not going to work at a hospital foundation gala or something. Understandable. Understandable. 
found, I found that out the hard way a time or two. But uh, I've had some uh, high water marks for sure. You know, I was doing uh, an auction for the David Foster Foundation in Toronto a few years ago, and Andrea Bocelli uh, was the entertainer that night. And he donated two seats on his private jet to fly to Florence, Italy, to stay with he and his wife in their home for four nights. Sounds and like a great evening. It was wild, and that sold for hundred grand. I did an auction up in uh, Cold Lake for Stars Air Ambulance, and the local town doctor donated a painless vasectomy. And that sold for $3,800, I'm assuming, to a guy not from Alberta. He didn't know you could get that done for free in Alberta. So, you know, you see it all. It's been a ton of fun. I was doing a little church auction one night. The parish priest donated, uh, uh, he called it a pew with a view, guaranteed front row seating, midnight mass, Christmas Eve for a family of four. You know, that sold for 3000 bucks. So uh, it's important in this business, you need to know how to entertain people and engage them, hold their attention, and then be able to extract the money. Thanksgiving weekend is almost upon us and we have so many different things that we can be thankful for including the incredible Canadian talent that makes its way to Lloydminster. A week from today, Natalie McMaster is going to be at the Vic Juba Community Theatre. She is an incredible fiddle player, she's a step dancer, you're going to be entertained when you head out for a night of great music. She's won the Juno Award for Instrumental Album of the Year a couple of times and also the CCMA has named her Fiddle Player of the Year in the past as well. So you're in for a great show. Get your tickets now at the Vic Juba Community Theatre box office or online, victjubatheatre.ca. Everybody is invited to be German for a day when the Lloydminster German Heritage Society presents their annual Oktoberfest. It's been voted the best Oktoberfest in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and it's going to be right here at the Stockade Convention Center coming up on October the 25th. So you've still got time to get your tickets. They've got great entertainment. The Emeralds are going to be here. You'll be able to see the Concordia Alpenrose dancers perform for you, plus the food, always delicious, and a few great beverages for you as well. Get your tickets it's now for Oktoberfest. You can stop by Cliff Rose for Clothes in downtown Lloydminster. And a show that's just been announced, Tracy Miller is coming to Paradise Valley on November the 1st. It's going to be a night full of great music, great stories, and she might even play some new music from an album that she hopes to release in the new year. You can get your tickets now by stopping by ATB Financial in Paradise Valley. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening. Back at fire station number two, and I'm joined once again by Assistant Fire Chief uh, Bill Heesing. Now, Bill, behind us we have the uh, aerial ladder, is that what you call it? Correct, yes, it's aerial ladder. It uh, goes about 115 feet in the air, has a monitor on the basket that flows about 4,000 gallons a minute. Um, so it's, uh, we are, we're able to use it to where we need to use some uh, master streams or some big water on, on the larger fires. So. Uh, not for those uh, who have a fear of height, certainly. Um, so you guys, I was heard, told off camera that you guys can actually um, sort of program it as well for when you're dealing with too much smoke and the operator can't really see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. There's a remote monitor, so there is a monitor on the basket and uh, the person can be on the ground with a remote control and can control uh, what type of flow and what type of spray we want out of the monitor from the ground. So we don't have to be in the basket and exposing ourselves to the, to the smoke and... Uh, that from that air and so and now there's two gentlemen up there right now is it always two men up in uh, in the air ladder aerial ladder or do you sometimes have one person and uh, how many people uh, are involved with the total operation so it's three with the operator three total, uh, three total operations so always try and keep two in the basket work in a buddy system in the basket uh, in case something goes wrong and then we have one uh, gentleman at the back of the truck that can control uh, where the ladder needs to go and again he would be out of the smoke and out of the out of the water he can uh, have control of what he needs to do. And uh, how often does this particular uh, vehicle get used? Because obviously there's many uh, situations where you're taken to that don't require the height involved. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we would roll it on any sort of a four-story or more condo building or apartment building, but we'd also would roll it to the big box stores such as the Walmarts, Canadian Tires, Home Depot, so where, where it's a large surface to cover, um, it, can, it has the reach and it has the height that we'd like to use it for. So. Absolutely, and as you folks can see, there is plenty of height to be had uh, with this aerial ladder and the truck here at station number two. Remember, you still have till 8 o'clock to uh, enjoy the uh, display here. For now, let's head back into studio. One more look at your weather.
Thanks, Josh. Well, taking a look at current temperatures, it is still two here in Lloydminster, two out in St. Paul, three in Bonneville, Marwayne, Vermilion, five in Lacklebish and Vegerville, four in Wainwright, three also in Provo, six in Edmonton, four in Cold Lake. And on the Saskatchewan side, one in Macklin, Maidstone, St. Walberg and Meadow Lake, two in Green Lake, four in Isla Cross, two in North Battleford and three in Pearsland. Now tomorrow we'll see seven as our daytime high for Lloyd Minster. Also in Maidstone, St. Walberg, Meadow Lake, Green Lake, Isla Cross, eight in Macklin, North Battleford and Pearsland and in Cold Lake, Bonneville, uh, Lacklebish and Vegerville. Also sitting at eight as well as in Wainwright and Provo, seven in Vermilion and St. Paul and nine out in Edmonton. Now across the country, nine out in uh, Vancouver, six in Edmonton and in Whitehorse, three in Yellowknife, zero out in Regina, zero also in Winnipeg where they're seeing some flurries, 13 in Toronto, 9 in Quebec City, 5 in St. John's and 9 in Halifax. Now your school day forecast for tomorrow, six, minus 6 is 8 a.m. wake up, but it should be sunny throughout the entire day. Three, minus three by the time recess rolls around and then we'll warm up till two degrees and then at lunchtime and then at schools out it'll be seven degrees. Now your next seven days a high of seven on Friday with mostly sunny skies and then on Saturday a little bit more cloud coverage with a high of eight high of seven on Sunday with mostly cloudy skies and then we have a chance of some flurries mixed with some rain on Monday with a high of five also a high of five on Tuesday and then sunny day on Wednesday Wednesday with a high of 9 and a high of Thursday as well with a mix of sun and cloud. That is your 7 day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. I'm joined now by Canada's number one fundraising auctioneer, Danny Hooper. Danny, thank you so much for joining the program. For someone who would be interested in speaking in public or has been told they have the gift of gab and can do so in a way with humor, with charisma, what would be your advice starting out trying to make a living in this kind of business? Well, I would find a mentor, uh, first of all, find somebody who's doing it. Uh, you know, people that are successful in any walk of life are typically very willing to share their knowledge. They've got nothing, you know, they, they've... They've, uh, they're already successful, and there's, there's really no secrets in this business. Uh, as far as the public speaking, I would look at joining Toastmasters. Uh, that's a great organization. And uh, getting up and speaking every opportunity you get, I would go out, and if it's something you're interested in, I would go attend some of these events and watch the auctioneer, watch the master's ceremonies, uh, go and see public speakers whenever you get a chance. Nowadays on YouTube, you can see lots of everybody everywhere. So I'd sit and do that kind of homework and research, and then find a good mentor. And what's coming up for you in the next uh, couple of months, weeks? What's another big event you're really looking forward to? And when can we see you in uh, Lloyd Minster again? Well, uh, 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 thanks for asking that. We're coming in, I think, February or March with the band. We're coming to Vic Juba to do what we call our Cabin Fever Tour. So that's an evening of my original music and comedy. Uh, as far as auctions, this is the busy time of year, both springtime and the fall. We're into the gala season now. So I've got the Festival of Trees coming up in Fort McMurray and also in Edmonton. I've got a big event next weekend for the National Music Center down in Calgary and stuff. So lots, lots on the go. Doing about three, uh, three events a week right now. And I'm assuming you're an Oilers fan still at this point in your life, or have you switched allegiances? Well, no. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I was a runt when I was a kid, and that's where the sense of humor kind of developed up to keep from getting bullied. You know, I was never a jock, and I was the last kid picked on every sport team and the first kid to get a dodgeball in the face even when we weren't playing dodgeball. And so I uh, I just never grew up as a jock or an athlete, so I'm not that big on sports. But, yeah, I guess if I had to call it, I'd say I'm an Oilers fan. I live in Edmonton. But, uh, and it go Oilers, but uh, yeah, I'm not a real sport guy, so. <laughs> so not expecting you to be at any Oiler functions in the near future then? No, I don't get a lot of their work, no, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, you gotta know your sandbox, stick in your sandbox, stay in your lane. Uh, I learned that a long time ago. Don't be everything to everybody, don't try and be, because you'll just wind up disappointing other people and especially yourself. So, you know, I know where my, uh, I know where my sandbox is. And I know people certainly love that you come to this sandbox and entertain audiences here in Lloydminster. Let's end it with this. Um, just uh, what does it mean to be involved with smaller communities and how do you kind of find a special feeling when you see groups like this come together that, you know, especially in a tough 
economy like it has been for this community. Oh, definitely. I'm a small town boy. Like I said, I grew up in Tomahawk, so I really identify with rural people, uh, with the mindset and the heart that you find in these smaller communities. I work lots in the big cities, and the, the difference is palpable. And I just, I, I don't, you know, I go into the big cities, do my work, and, and get out. Uh, you know, this small town folks, this is where I belong, and that's why even as an entertainer on the country music side, I take my shows to the smaller towns. That's And I did the morning show for seven years on CFCW, so I really understand the rural mentality here uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and our family's originally from Saskatchewan, so yeah, these are my people. I love them. Absolutely, and we love to have you here. Remember, you're, he's going to be back at the Vic Juba on what weekend again? Uh, we don't have the, I don't know the exact date. My manager's booked it already. We're coming in February or March. It's called the Danny Hooper Cabin Fever Tour, and we go out in the middle of dead of winter with an evening of great original music and comedy, so we hope folks will come and see us. Looking forward, you'll be able to get the tickets on Vic Juba at some point in the near future. Things are starting to darken a little bit here at fire station number two off of College Drive by Lakeland College, but there's still plenty of people uh, enjoying their time out. You can see the aerial ladder is still uh, moving at the moment. Plenty of people inside the station behind me. Others uh, still out by the uh, hoses where kids are getting a chance to spray fire uh, fires in various houses on their own. So still an hour of this open house right till eight o'clock if you want to come check any of this out yourself. And and ask any of the firefighters questions about what to do in the case of a fire, other preventive, preventative measures other than what's been discussed already this evening. Of course, if you haven't been, can't be able to make it out this evening, certainly take the few lessons that were shared by uh, Chief and Assistant Chiefs uh, Jordan Newton and Bill Heesing. Uh, if anything else, it's also though a really cool opportunity to sit inside a fire truck and hold a hose yourself. I don't know if everyone will get to wear a suit like I can. I got to say though, they were very comfy indeed, very comfy suit. Uh, not e heavy, not easy though. Heavy at 50 pounds. So if you're running in one of these suits, that's going to take a little extra work. No wonder these guys have to be in such great shape. Uh, that's it for me. We'll head back into studio and wrap up tonight's cast. Thanks, Josh. Taking a look quickly at your seven-day forecast. Seven tomorrow is the high, then eight on Saturday, seven on Sunday, five on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, and nine on Wednesday and Thursday to finish up uh, the rest of the week. So those fall temperatures are definitely hitting us. And like we said before, at least for this Thanksgiving weekend, it is going to be a little bit warmer and not in those below temperatures. Yeah, exactly, which is always hopeful. So since you are going to be gone tomorrow, what are some of the plans that you have for Thanksgiving? Uh, just spending time with family, um, a couple dinners, celebrating my father's birthday uh, a couple weeks early. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Should be a definitely interesting yeah. weekend. Well, thank you to everyone who joined for this hour of primetime local news. We'll have more primetime local news tomorrow.